back, Brian Oaks. driving up to Connecticut to see my to see my mom and I had my two kids in the back of the car and I'm driving and, and I get this call and my kids are nine and six at this time and I'm driving and I get this call hey Brian it's Josh oh, hey man what's up it's like I, I, I found someone to, uh, to, to to write a song with me for the film and I was like okay cool yeah Sting is going to do something <laughs> What? <laughs> He's like, yeah. And so, so, so Josh and Sting wrote that amazing song. But the, but the funny part was, is I was, I was, I, I hung up the phone, and my kids were in the back, I'm like, Dad, what's wrong? Is everything all right? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. That uh, Josh and, and and Sting are going to write a song for the film. And I, you know, knew that they wouldn't know anything about what I was talking about. And my nine-year-old goes, J. Ralph. Sting? Roxanne? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, how did you know that? But anyway, so thanks Josh and Sting, it's, it's really, really amazing. So, I also want to, um, gosh, I don't, don't forget it, but we have such amazing people who came out. Um, so, uh, the writers, Chris Schwong and Heather McDonald, they can stand up. I want you guys to be recognized. And, uh, and you have uh, Alice Kazenspe, who edited this film. And you have, uh, uh, Jonathan Stromberg, who, who was eight, uh, AE. And our grizzled veteran Doug Blush, who's consulting editor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and did I say Claire Popkin? No, I didn't. Who's Claire? She's our director of photography. <laughs> and uh, and then finally, there's a, a woman who has been working with me for. I don't know, three years now, and uh, she's, she's, you know the phrase, is, I know a guy who knows a guy, well, she's the guy, not the second guy, she's the guy who knows, <laughs> that's Emma Littman. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these guys are, 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 are amazing, um, gosh, I hope I didn't forget anybody. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, I guess we want to do yeah, a Q&A, but some yeah, people and, up or? yeah, there are some people who are going to come up for a Q&A, and, &A, and um, those people are here, um, Diane and Dr. John Foley. And we also 
also have um, yeah, come on down, folks. We have uh, Pierre Torres and Daniel Rye. And Daniel was in Chicago last night, and HBO was down here to Dallas, and then he came in this morning, so he's been coming from Denmark. I just went to sleep, so thank you for the here. And uh, two more people, if they want to come up, I've seen them briefly. I haven't actually seen Claire yet, but Zach Bailey and Claire Morgan Gillis. So, uh, before one second, before we get started, I just wanted to um, say Jim's siblings are here Michael. John, Mark, and Katie. And they're standing right here. Just so you know. Okay, so if any of you have questions for Brian or anyone up here, uh, raise your hand. I'll call on you. Please try to speak as loudly as possible. And uh, we'll give it a go. And if you guys don't mind just uh, stepping down a little bit to make sure you're in the mics. And Oh, we're very much in the light. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel you right now. Right. This, this theater is particularly tough to see anybody out there, so uh, we'll try our best. Anyone have any questions? Sure. Someone here. Um, the Jim's family. What a wonderful family. And to your filmmaking, um, it, it brings to all of us who know that picture and know that event, who the person really was. And that's the most important thing that a documentary filmmaker can do, is to really tell the story. I wanted to ask the parents, I heard you this morning on the radio, how do you feel about the administration and what they can do in the future when this happens to other hostages? Okay, the question was for Mr. and Mrs. Foley. How do they feel about our uh, administration and what they can do in the future for other families in this situation when they're a family member becomes a hostage? Well, as Michael said in the film, the, the first year was horrible. Nothing was done. We, we um, trusted our government. Jim was not a priority, despite the fact that they said he was not the highest priority. As you know, the outcome for the American hostages and the three British hostages is they all kill. President Obama ordered a, a hostage policy review in June, I mean in, in early in March, or, and it concluded in June. Not much of this made the uh, media, but uh, the important things Resulting from that is the establishment of a hostage recovery unit uh, cell. Their job is to go to work every day with a whiteboard up with the names of all, all American hostages on that whiteboard. And they, they, are, they co located the FBI, the CIA, and the State Department so that the information can no longer be siloed and so that it was pushed upstairs because the most important person to get any of this information is our president, President Obama. He, was the only person who could have made um, uh, a difference um, prior to the uh, event. The other thing that we feel very strongly about is they have in that program now a negotiator who can uh, negotiate with captors at a level of a president. One of our biggest struggles was the fact that um, ISIS is a terrorist organization, and after 9-11, all terrorist organizations are not to be negotiated with. So sometimes that's been interpreted, some, over that some period of time, that's been interpreted as we're not going to communicate, within our, we're going to push everything, we're not going to do anything, because we're not, going to, we're not going to in any way relate to these terrorist people. So Diane, um, at the time of Jim's death, immediately said we, we have to form a foundation. We can't let Jim's death go in vain. We had several campaigns we really want to pursue that will make a difference in the lives of American citizens. And um, the recent release of the Iranian-American hostages is hopeful. 
But we still have our Texas Austin Tice missing for three years somewhere in Syria. It's a very silent, poignant crisis um, throughout the world. There are hostages all over the world. And so we, one of the things we hope Jim's legacy can bring is a higher priority for American citizens in this situation and the value that um, conflict journalists bring to our democracy. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Uh, uh, sure. Gentleman here. Back to the four of you who were, have actually experienced this before. Are you back in conflict journalism? Are you traveling into the Middle East? Are you doing the things that you used to do at the same level? Or is there any apprehension now? Is there anything you're doing differently after these experiences? The, the question was for the journalists and part of former hostages. Are they back at it? And are they in conflict zones now and stuff? So. You want to start? I can start. Yeah. Um, I. I, when you when you experience uh, history uh, so close up as as, as some of us did, uh, it's very difficult to ignore it afterwards when you when you get home and uh, and what I see in this when I, what I saw in this movie when James came home from Libya uh, I could very well recognize that um, and uh, and I, and it is more important than ever that we are doing these things as we are doing but. Uh, it is a diff different world world now than it was 20 years ago. So I'm very happy when, especially when, when I hear that 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 something are being done to help. I know uh, that a lot of things have changed in Denmark uh, after I came home. A lot of people started to wake up and realize that there is a consequence doing this. <coughs> so we just have to. Uh, yeah, we cannot go and be these, what is called, uh, like these uh, uh, low-budget journalists. We, it's very important that people recognize the importance of, of the footage zones and treat us like, like, like they treat uh, freelancers as they sh are supposed to be treated. Um, I think that's, that's, that's very important. So I, I'm still back. Any of the rest of you want to respond to this? Sure, there's been a very important movement towards uh, professionalizing the freelance journalist cohort and uh, to make news organizations who buy our work aware that there are certain risks that went into gathering this and, you know, we're, we don't have the money by ourselves to pay for it. Um, and pay is a safety issue. Pay is a safety issue. Um, if you don't have enough money to cover your insurance, to cover your flag jacket, to cover a driver who will not let someone else plant a bomb under the car. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you should look at the Frontline Freelance Registry. They're doing a lot of really great work. And yeah, me personally, um, I'm currently teaching courses on the Arab Spring at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. And let's see, I've left the Middle East for the moment. And I am pursuing the story of Syrian refugees in this country, as we, I would certainly hope, continue to welcome them. Okay. Um. Anyone else here? Gentlemen over here. Yeah, Brian, what was your inspiration for this film? What was the book? What? This question was for Brian. What was his inspiration for this film? Sure. Um, you know, I think. And speaking for myself and probably most of everybody, when you, when you lose someone, family member, friend, um, especially, in, you know, you get very protective of the story that they leave behind and the legacy that they leave behind. And obviously with Jim, which was such a global event, um, I was, you know, I, I witnessed uh, news articles and, and information uh, that may not have been uh, factually accurate, um, seeing the image of Jim that we all know used in ways that I was personally uh, very uncomfortable with. And so I, I felt a responsibility to Jim 
to take that on and I wanted to make sure that people knew who he was and I think when you do know who James was and what he was doing and all these this, this amazing life that he was that he was pursuing you see that image again and it, and it suddenly becomes recontextualized you look at it in a very different way and it takes on a new meaning and that was uh, that was um, a, uh, a big goal for me in, in the film to, to achieve that so one of the one of the many reasons I, I, the second another another reason you know Jim was was telling these stories of the Syrians and what was going on three years ago. And these guys were these guys were there, and now we are seeing the largest refugee crisis since World War II, and now it's now it's relevant. But these guys were there three years ago, and the stories that we see Jim telling about the hospital and the bombings, um, people. You know, we really weren't paying attention, but now we are, and I wanted this film to carry on those stories that Jim was telling, because they are really important, and they're much more, they're actually, you know, even more so now, so. Um, uh, Jim's dad wants to something. I, I would really um, ask you all to join us, the James Foley Legacy Foundation, to help support um, families of hostages, they need, they need us all badly. I'd also like you to join us to help improve the lot of freelance journalists in terms of protection, education, pay, and support by their new agencies. And I'd also like to, at some point, tell you that Jim is going to work at the Jim's Foundation is going to work on improve, improving the disadvantaged lives of disadvantaged children by through education, giving them a hope and a future rather than. Uh, and nothing. So thank you. Please join us in, in our efforts. Thank you. So uh, we have time for like two more questions if anyone has one. Um, and if you're in the back, like in the question, please wave strongly because it's really hard to see. Oh, okay, someone right here. Um, I had the good fortune of sitting down at a table with you and we can talk about this at other times than we have. But from Beginning to end, when you started this project until now, how has it changed you personally, professionally, what your plans are for the future? How has this affected your direction? Is it something that you feel great about? You know, this is something I definitely want to keep doing. And you know, what, what effect has it had on you overall, especially after meeting all of these amazing people? Um, the question was for Brian. Uh, from beginning to end, what... Um, what has this whole process, how has it, it affected him personally and uh, moving forward if uh, he's going to continue to do this kind of thing? That's my brother-in-law grilling me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's the last year, you know, 14 plus months, it's, it's, it's been incredible. I mean, I feel like the, the, the film is kind of two parts. It's, it's what I knew of Jim. And, what's, and it's what I didn't know, Jim. And so um, I've been working in documentaries for over 10 years now, kind of behind the scenes. And, and um, I, I, I've witnessed a lot of filmmakers go through similar experiences. Of, of you just you work on one film for 14 months, and you, get, you, you become so familiar with one really specific thing. And I, 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 I really... I loved the entire process. I loved living with Jim for 14 months, meeting Pierre and Daniel and other hostages that were with Jim was just an incredible personal experience. I mean, what you saw in the film is a tiny amount of what of, of what we you know found out, um, and it was great. I was Michael and Katie Fuller were actually able to come with us to Europe when we went. Um, which, you know, that's not in the film, but that experience of filmmaking is what really it's, it's kind of all about. So, I, yeah, I, 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 I will continue. I hope to continue, and uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. We highly encourage you to continue. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, our final question is gentleman right here. I have a question for the journalists. Um, my question is, 
what what do you think for each of you the reason is Jim did this work? Okay, the question was for the journalists. What do each of them think the reason is that Jim did this work? Uh, he wanted to see what was happening and share the story with other people. And that's it. I don't think there's a grander philosophical narrative to it. I think he was curious and he wanted to see and he wanted to get the truth and he wanted to share the truth with people. And I think it disturbed him to no end to see people who were ignorant, who were misinformed, and uh, who needed to have some information. Anyone else want to chime in on that? <laughs> they all are clearly in agreement. All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you for Brian and all of you.